all right what is up y'all it's up spartan is here with episode two of the san diego padres rebuild now in this episode i'm planning on moving forward with my plans from the previous so i'm gonna be going after a maximum of two free agents definitely getting one uh draft wise i'm not gonna be doing any scouting this season because i don't know why i just don't do the first season and then definitely scouting next season though. After that, we'll be doing tr- uh, obvious trade that, like even like if you guys pointed out to keep this one guy, which I'm pretty sure you wouldn't, I wouldn't still trade him, cause he just has no future and he costs way too much money. This guy walks too much. He walks quite a bit too, but I'd rather take a flyer on Rex Brothers two year deal. Let's just offer three million as death. Now I'm not gonna have him be in the big leagues. Shoot, I have to cut someone. Mm. Now he's not gonna be in the big leagues until at least midseason, and that's if he does well in the minors. If he's not doing well in the minors, and there's no reason to call him up, even if we sign him for X amount of money, we'll trade him away. Like I'm not gonna have him waste the roster spot. Third base, we're we'll decide about that later. The shortstop, I'm definitely not okay with Felix Ramirez. I know that he's still playing well for his age and all that, but I'd rather have someone younger take over a shortstop while we get our shortstops in the minors all trained up and everything. So we're going to assign Everett Cabrera to, I would, to your deal with a club option for the last one. So we're going to have to pay him a little bit more than I would really like to, but that is perfectly fine because he's going to be doing what we want him to do. Basically, uh, shoot, why did I keep on thinking to do this before? Uh, you really have no future with us, so you're gone. So, three years of a club option. What was it? 10.5 million? Let's see if he accepts it. Yeah, he's gonna accept that, so he's gonna be our shortstop. Here's what I was thinking about doing, but the money and the money. Okay, 17.1 million. I'm really trying to cut back on funds, not pick up around about the same amount of funds. I do love Joe Jimenez. I'll probably try to acquire him in a different trade, but this is not the trade for me as Anibal Sanchez has dipped in overall. He's getting paid way too much. I think what he's probably most of that salary is in here, like 16 mil. But that's not going to be the trade that we're doing. And there, there's a bunch of other decent offers around, but I'm going after Gerardo Parra. I know I've said, was talking about saving money, but I think Parra could come in and play pretty well in left field for us so we're going to go ahead and acquire him from the Rockies. I don't really see it as that risky because it is the Rockies and we do play against them but it's the Rockies and we're the Padres so who really cares honestly. All right so that's it. All right what is up y'all so the draft just concluded for us. I'm going to sign them here with you guys live on screen. We got Harvey Kent in the first round. He's a closing pitcher and the funny thing is I was like tempted to go for Cliff Endo and I ended up getting them both because Cliff Endo got passed on the rest of the first round and we had the first two picks because we had the compensation picks the next round so we got the first two there and we took Albert Mori and Endo so we got a 90, 86, 84 potential and 89 potential in the second round here with Felix Fabregas. Like I said I'm going to have to work on some of these names and even some names we have on the roster right now. So there's Lee Der Dietrich, I'm so I I messed up that name. I know that uh, he's 83 overall currently. And then there's Sean here. I'm not even gonna try his last name because I don't want to mess up anymore. And he is currently 76 potential, and that's one of the guys I took a flyer on. Uh, his power's low, his contact's low, all his batting stuff as well is well. I mean low. His feeling is pretty good though. His speed is really low, so. At best, I could probably trade him to the American League, and he could develop into probably a pretty good DH, or at least first baseman fielding-wise. So he could be like a good backup, I would say. Bench player. Why not say backup? Okay, Aldo Lopez here. I don't know why this guy was passed on so much, because he's an 89 potential, and he had no injury problems. So I'm so confused about that. Okay, I got, I got you on YouTube. And then there's Nate Barreto here. He's 71 overall. 
he throws right, which I like right-handers, but I also like to have that lefty, which is truly why I went to clo with the closing pitcher here. That's still a bit risky. I'll go through the river loss. I know you can see them there. Uh, but I doubt you're really paying attention up there. So, I think he'll be good, and Johnny North, I think, can develop more. Both of these guys have low ceilings, I would say, considering my draft that I had, as well as this guy. But I think they can all improve and go past that ceiling, hopefully. Especially for the Padres, because they need a good draft. <laughs> and there's the closing pitcher. He's 69 overall, so we could probably see him in, at the earliest, 2018. More likely, probably in 2019. Because I want him to develop his walks per nine and his home runs per nine right there. His fielding also needs to get worked on, even though it's not that important for a closer, but you still don't want them to miss that ground ball in the like, bottom or the top of the ninth, and then like the guy gets safe and then they make a comeback. You don't want that to happen. You want the out to be for sure every single time. So Kent, probably 2019 call-up. Maury might get called up sooner if he develops fast. I want his walks per nine to increase, and his K through nine. Other than that, he could be probably a good fifth starter, right? And probably 2018. These guys are probably going to be called up a couple of years because they're so young. You know when it comes on up too young, because then they'll be him for agency super young, and then you'll have like phenoms like freaking Bryce Hopper, who's going to be getting paid, and he'll still have plenty of years to be playing. Same as Felix, uh, not Felix. I already fuzzed out. Jose Fernandez. He's going to be super young. He's going to be hitting for agency. And he's going to get paid at a pretty young age. So there's my little spiel on that. But center fielder, left fielder, first base, shortstop, right pitcher. We already went through all these. Let's make sure these guys get on the team for next season. Of course, they're going to be in the minors. Uh, some of them might even be in single A, especially the 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds. If they're high enough rating like some of these guys are, they will probably be in double A. None of them will be in triple A. The game, for some reason, automatically puts the majority of them in triple A. I will demote them myself down to double A. But overall, I think this draft went pretty well. Uh, another thing I wanted to note is while I was sending to this point, Eric Cabrera went down. For six plus months, we're going to go check on him real fast. I didn't really read too well into it. A torn Achilles tendon for six plus months. It says one day he's not. Trust me, he's not. He's he's probably done for the year. So we're going to have to get someone to play shortstop or have Alexi Armarista step up big time and play shortstop and sign a temporary guy to PR bench. Jared Kozar is injured. He's actually pitching pretty well. Okay. Wow. Three big leaguers are injured. You gotta be kidding me. This is poor. This guy could be good, and I don't really think anyone's gonna pick him up because this game don't sign a lot of free agents during the real regular season because it's pretty realistic that way. You don't really see that happen too often, and I don't even think it's... I don't... It might be allowed. I don't know. I don't know all those specific things. All those little things about baseball there. So, we'll, we're gonna have to give him a call because we need another infielder, I think. Could have brought up weeks, but I'm not really too bright on these guys' futures. They're probably going to be trade deadline people towards the end. And let's see. Most of these guys are going to get fired at the end of the season. Besides, these guys, these guys expire. He's going to fire probably fire, 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 fire. Whatever. We're, we're getting a fresh start at the end of the season. Ah, uh, Josh Naylor. Why is he called up? He's 47 overall. Oh, my God. This guy is going to... Oof. Come on, game. Why do you put him on a freaking 40-man roster and call him up? Horrible. I'd rather have this guy called up because guess what? He's called up in real life. Call him up. I don't freaking care. Oh, my God. This is why I hate letting the computer take control of the roster for even, like, what was it? Like, two months that sent? Okay. We're going to call up early because we desperately need it. And then Rex Brothers... I know he sa I said he was going to be mid-season, but we need him right now, so he's getting called up. He'll probably end up getting sit back down. I don't really know. Computer gets to decide that, and because I'm going to be sending up to the trade deadline, this might as well just be in it too. Okay. So here we have another offer on Derek Norris. 
This time it's from Boston. Last time it was from the Dodgers for a starting pitcher who is 25, Alex Wood. This time the Red Sox are offering Henry Owens, who is 23, so he still has quite a bit of... Okay, I did not mean to do that yet. He still has probably a pretty bright future. I mean, look at this. This ain't too bad of stuff. I mean, we could probably use him. But, I mean, I'll write it down because I, I, I will strongly consider this for him towards the trade deadline. But it's another thing. I'm worried probably about his playtime. Who's their catcher? Ah, he might actually get a lot of playtime. This could be a trade that happens, but it's a little bit advantage me. So, if I want to pull it off, I have to pull it off here. Oh, this is hard because I only wanted to do that one trade. Or was it two trade? I think it was one trade and three free agents. Yeah, it was one trade and three free agents. I only want to do that one trade this video because this is one of the main guys that I was going to trade away at the trade deadline, most likely. Because we don't have a bright future within the next few years and I'm going to say free agency. Three years. We probably make the playoffs in his last year of his contract and then he'll be demanding a lot of money. So I would just ship him off now to the Red Sox, who are probably going to the playoffs this year. I don't know how well they're doing, but either way, I think acquiring this lefty, Henry Owens, even if he don't cut it on the rotation, or if he struggles, he can always be sent down to the minors or to the bullpen. Be a long relief guy, or be in the minors, and be a starting pitcher to try to get his stuff right. So, with that being, all that being said, I'm going to accept this deal from the Boston Red Sox. And it will increase our available funds a little bit, which I don't really care too much about right now. But there is one of our major trade pieces away, which is kind of sad, but I hope that pitcher works out for us. And we kind of need pitchers right now because they're either injured or they suck. All right, y'all, thank you for watching this video. In other Yanks I news, did. Fielder, Jacoby Ellsbury I will be did out of action trades. for a few days, according to I team reports. Three plays. He's said to be dealing with a sprained knee. And... The Cincinnati I Reds took multiple offers to on multiple players. One guy accepted, and that was one of the extra trades because I only intended on doing Kevin one. Kevin Segrist got his second W of the and, season uh, as the Cardinals got by the Dodgers four to three. Our record is horrible. The Atlanta Braves got <laughs> we are the worst in the major leagues the by Rocks in Colorado, five to three. What is the second worst in the NL? The Miami and Marlins pitched well, allowing three hits as they got the best of the visiting Mets two to one. There's obviously bright teams because there's a bunch of horrible teams. Pedro Stroop earned his sixth win out of the pen, helping lead the Cubs over the Brewers. Oh my god, that's horrible. Zach F. Eight games. The win his fourth this season as the fighting field. Eight games worse than the second. One. Worst team. Irvin that Santana is bad. Was like, untouchable like, on the mound, crafting an amazing oh. no hit performance. Okay. As the twins we have a lot to work to do with this franchise. To I will still among play. The AL leaders honestly, I'll probably only play three games this season. The Seattle Mariners do you want to be honest? Because I one, think the offseason is going to be a whole lot more entertaining than this season is going to be. I can't tell you anything about the offseason because I haven't done it yet. It's going to be a whole lot more interesting than this season. So we'll play three games so I can get a highlight video put together of those three games. To three, the Rangers and yeah, that's, for a four that's as gonna do it for this. So thank you all for joining. Four to one, and I am A's working on my editing skills as far as, as getting them from the Twitch to YouTube. Five to three. So to you, YouTube Carlos viewers, Correa had three hits and drove in three. Thanks for the patience. The to if you show some, Angels, if not, to one. I understand. They have five straight but wins. it's gonna take a while before I get Thanks for this joining editing me. That's down all for today. and get used to doing YouTube videos. Enjoy the games. Now, obviously, this ain't a full-time thing. This is just for fun. So, I hope you had a good time because I'm having an okay time with this franchise so far, even though we're doing dreadful. Until next time, y'all. It's been good. Peace out, y'all. And there's no stopping us right now. I feel so close to you right now. Man, 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 man.